It's Ron Brown with Tech for Seniors. Today's topic is virtual reality for seniors. Now you know the routine. If you like this video, please click the like and also subscribe to the channel. It really helps our channel and people wanting to watch this video. Let's get on with the show. Now this presentation is going to be in three parts. The first part will be the history of virtual reality. Part two is what can you buy in 2021? The hardware. We'll look at the hardware associated with virtual reality. Part three will be what should seniors use virtual reality for? Now let's look at the history of virtual reality. Where did it all start? What can we define as virtual reality? And let's look at Holland in 1881. The man's name was Hendrik Willem Mesdag. But we were not so strict and we could argue that virtual reality goes back to the 19th century. Let's look what could have happened in 1881. This was the year that the panorama Mesdag was finished. Now this is a very large painting. It's a cylindrical panorama painting of approximately 14 meters high and set up with a circumference around 120 meters. The painting is one of the oldest 19th century panoramas in the world. It is a view of the North Sea, the dunes, the Hague, and as Scheveningen. Excuse my Dutch. Now, as Rembrandt is associated with Amsterdam and Vermeer is with Delft, so Mesdag is associated with the Hague. Mesdag was born in Holland in 1831 and later moved to the Hague with his wife. He was considered an influential man in the art world of the Hague. And he was an important painter and a member on a lot of arts council. The contract for painting this panorama came from Belgium, where such paintings were a huge trend. Mesdag didn't actually paint this all by himself. He painted this with his wife. He painted it with students and other people who helped him paint this very large painting. And this could arguably be the first virtual reality painting that we have. And if you go to the Hague today, there's a large museum. And you'll see in this picture people coming up in the center of the museum and looking at 360 degree view right around. Pretty impressive. You could always argue that in 1939 this also could have been the first virtual reality. This was invented in 1839. This 3D illusion was achieved by lining up two mirrors to reflect two images. As photography had not yet progressed to have images, so they appeared as drawings. And so this is how you had a 3D image in 1839. Now in 1939, Sawyer Incorporated was one of the largest color postcard producers of the time. And it streamlined the device even more by taking color images, and we had Kodachrome film them, and making it available by placing them between two discs. In other words, 14 images for seven stereo views. And then you inserted this disc into a special viewer and eventually became known as a Viewmaster later on. And this was a device that was a big hit in 1939 at the World's Fair. And as Sawyer Incorporated was a postcard company, the first reels were a series of travel-related images of the Grand Canyon and Carsbad Caverns. Now Sawyer Incorporated acquired True Vision, a competing stereo manufacturer and the process, the rights to use Walt Disney Studio characters in their reels was obtained. A year later in 1952, a home use camera was even sold so families could make their own reels. Several models of the Viewmaster were developed, including a model known for illumination. In 1962, saw the arrival of the modern Viewmaster. Model E was streamlined and now made of lighter plastic, and we have a picture of it here. 
I'm sure we all had one of those when we were way back when. Now in 1962, the first immersive experience happened. Fast forward when the machine was introduced, known as one of the earliest examples of immersive multi-sensor technologies. This way the machine was capable of triggering all the senses in an effective manner. And the experience is, was about riding on a motorcycle through the New York streets while feeling the wind blowing through your hair, hearing the sounds of the city and inhaling the smells of the city. And here you have a picture of the Sensorama in 1962 one of the first virtual reality machines that we had. A few years later, it was 1968. The most people argue as the year the first head-mounted display was developed. This head-mounted display was entitled HeadSight and was made for helicopter pilots in the military. Head movements would move a remote camera allowing the user to naturally look around in the camera. And here's an example of that. But the head site was not actually developed for virtual reality applications. It was mostly a military application. And it wasn't until 1987 when a man by the name of John Lanier used the term virtual reality for the first time when he developed VR gear, virtual reality gear. Now, during the 1990s to the 2000s, there was certainly a decrease in popularity of virtual reality. During the 1990s, Jaron Lanier, but also Tom Zimmerman, marketed a range of virtual reality gear. However, the hype around the technology had an adverse effect and led to a decrease in popularity. I don't know if anybody remembered some of the, the early machines we had and this is one that never really had much popularity. This was called Virtual Boy and it came out by Nintendo. Now between the year 2000 and 2010 not much worth mentioning happened when it comes to head mounted displays. However some technologies related to virtual reality such as Google Street View that eventually was supported 3D were developed in this period. Now really between 2010 and 2015 virtual reality was reborn. In 2010 things started to get moving again. A man by the name of Palmer Lucky designed the first prototype of the Oculus Rift in his garage. Remember Bill Gates? Remember that story? And in 2012, they presented the first example of the Oculus Rift for the E3 gaming trade show. Well, in 2013 and 2014, Oculus shipped their first and second development kits ordered through their Kickstarter project. But it wasn't until 2014, Oculus was purchased by Facebook. Sony also announced a VR headset that was later going to become the PlayStation. Paul Murlocky didn't win the lottery, but he did suddenly find himself with a life-changing amount of money when he sold his startup to Facebook for over $2 billion when he was just 21 years old. Lucky is the co-founder of Oculus, the virtual reality technology company that makes the Rift VR headset. Between 2015 and 2020, we saw a rise in virtual reality. In 2015, HTC combined with a company called Valve and announced the HTC Vive headset with controllers and base station to allow for positional tracking using infrared light. In 2016, HTC was ready to ship its first unit called the HTC Vive Stream VR headset. This was the first commercial release 
of a sensor-based tracking which allowed for free movement of the users within a predefined space in their own living room. In 2017, Sony filed a patent that indicated they were developing a similar location tracking technology as the Vive for, they, for their PlayStation Virtual Reality. It also showed potential for the development of a wireless VR headset. And of course, in 2018, Oculus launched their first commercially available VR headset, which was, has a built-in screen that was affordable. There are many companies making virtual reality products, but if you go to Best Buy, you really have one of three choices. You'll have a choice of the Vive HTC, the Quest 2, the Oculus Quest 2, or the PlayStation VR. Well, there's, there's, there is one more. This is made by Microsoft. This is the HoloLens 2. It's not found at Best Buy. In fact, you can only buy it from Microsoft. And that's because it's $3,500. Yikes! Anyway, we'll be talking a little bit about that in one of our later videos. HoloLens is the most comfortable mixed reality device with industry-leading solutions that deliver an immersive experience, all enhanced by reality, security, and scalability of cloud and AI services from Microsoft. We'll be hearing a lot more about the HoloLens 2 this year. Well, as they say, stay tuned for part two. It, it's Ron Brown with Tech for Seniors.